multicultural aviation display. The airplane that's just taken off is the Gippsland GA200. That's clearly uh, Tim Sullivan in the triplane. Tim Sullivan, you can see they're flying one of the uh, DR1s, actually flies another Fokker for a living these days. He flies uh, the Fokker F27 Friendship, which uh, flies in and out of Woodburn. So uh, he's really, no wonder he's wearing the Fokker shirt. I saw him in yesterday. I hope he's not wearing it again today. It should be in the wash. Here, Graham, what's the story? Well, we said before we were looking for the truck driver for the truck, but it was a bit of a gag, really. I'm sorry, folks, I must apologise. There is no truck driver, and that's that's the magic of this particular display. The guy who's driving the truck is also the guy who's sitting in the aeroplane, and that's uh, our own Ray Patchett, based right here on the field as a resident agricultural aviation operator for the last, uh, must be 30 years. Ray got tired of having problems locating lo uh, loader drivers, always having to transport them to the place where he needed them, so he decided he was going to find a way around that, and he's invented this truck that he can drive, start, manoeuvre, and then operate the, the, um, the filler from, all from within the cockpit of the airplane. So you'll see Ray operating a, a board on the truck. He can manage this entire pro process all by himself. It's a one-man operation, so he fires the airplane, he loads the truck and then he loads from the truck and he can do the whole process by the, the truck. Control. Got that to be uh, operating the way he wanted it and then uh, he could go and fly the aeroplane. Yeah, very, very clever. I suppose a bit lonely because you don't have the loader driver to say day to every time you stop down for a load. But uh, it certainly makes a lot of economic sense. And that is a, what, a world first? Eric and Graham. Absolutely. Yeah. Some of the early top dressing trials in New Zealand. Were there other trials going on concurrently elsewhere at the world? Were there a bit of that around a similar time? Certainly was. It was an initiative uh, that started almost concurrently with the, the development of aeroplanes. The, um, as soon as farmers looked up and saw aircraft, they saw applications that uh, those aircraft might be able to be put to if they could handle the weight. aircraft that otherwise may have just disappeared off the planet. Well I guess that's quite true actually. We look at the airplanes from World War II, the fighters and the bombers were all gone but uh, because the trainers had applications with things like club flying and, and especially as you say with ag flying it gave them a reason to continue to exist so they didn't scrap them. And in the northern hemisphere of course uh, some of the bigger types, the bigger World War II types uh, have seen extensive services fire tankers and fire bombers and that's led to their longevity. Same thing, yeah. Actually, the, the best example is probably the Catalina, which uh, has uh, served for years in the fire bombing world. Give Ray a big wave. Not just a great pilot, but a very, very clever guy. <laughs> 